everyone and another English video today. I am only going to be doing one this week but just because I'm only doing one video you still need to keep up with the rest of the lessons okay and actually by the end of the week there's a really really uh, fun poem riddle task to do okay so you'll really enjoy it. So it's not going to be a very long video today because you've got lots of writing to do today. So we're going to start off with a bit of a warm up. Okay, so I'm going to share with you now a sentence on the screen. Just give me a second. Now my sentence isn't exactly correct. <clears throat> so here's my sentence. There once was an old man named Sid who liked to eat apples. Now, let's think about this. There are capital letters missing. There's a full stop missing. There's a capital letter where it shouldn't be. And there's one spelling mistake. One of those tricky words. So I'm going to give you a few seconds now to write this sentence down, but to put in the correct capital letters, full stops and change the spelling. Okay, so off you go. <clears throat> Okay, if you need longer, which you probably will because that wasn't very long at all, then just pause the video, okay? So, let's do our corrections now. Now, where do capital letters go? They go at the start of sentences and for names of people. Okay, so, first of all, the there here does not have a capital letter does it because at the start of the sentence it needs a capital letter so there once was now I'm looking at was and it doesn't look right do you know what's wrong with it yes it's one of the are tricky words and lots of us spell it with an O because it sounds like it's spelt with an O but actually it is spelt with a A okay one of those words where we sound it out and blend it back together and it doesn't sound how we say it how it is spelt okay so there once was an old man named now named can you do you notice it's got a capital letter does named need to have a capital letter is it at the start of a sentence N no is it a name of a person N no i don't think there's anybody called named hello mr named no Okay, so that doesn't need capital letter. So someone's put in an extra capital letter there. So name, Sid. Now Sid is a name. So what does it need? Capital letter. Just because it's on a new line doesn't mean that it's a new sentence. So Sid, okay who liked to eat apples. Oh, got it, you know, sorry. Is that done? Are we finished? No. What do we need to add on to the end there? A full stop. There we go. Our corrections. Fantastic. So, I'm going to share with you now our lovely The Elves and the Shoekeeper work, okay? Mm, da -dum -da -dum.
Okay, so on our last lesson, our last lesson was last on a Wednesday. Okay, and what you did on Wednesday, we talked through starting our elf story. Okay, and I said don't write it because you need to do each part first before you write it. So on Wednesday, you should have created your character, your elves or elf. Okay, so Thursday, you needed to decide who your character was, the person who needed help. So in the elves and the shoe shoemaker, it was the shoemaker. Okay, and you should have wrote, um, wrote a sentence to describe your character. Now, this is all going to help you. If you haven't done it already, do it now because it will help you to write your story. And you'll see why in a second. So write a descriptive sentence. So mine says, Steve is a happy gardener. He wears ripped, dirty, blue and old dungarees. So I've told you what he does, how he's feeling, what he wears with adjectives. Steve loves gardening, but lately all the plants he has planted have died. Oh no, so there's our problem. So he's got a problem. The plants keep dying. He doesn't know what's wrong. Unfortunately, everybody in the town has heard this and are no longer asking him to do their gardening. Oh dear, so that's the problem. So all the plants he planted are dying and now nobody wants him as their gardener. Okay. So then... On Friday, you should have done your setting. So what I mean by setting is where your story takes place. OK, so here's my setting here. So you're supposed to draw it and describe it. OK, so my setting, because obviously your setting has to match your character. So my character is a gardener. So my setting, my description for my setting is a small, quiet village next to giant snow-topped mountains. Lots of description there. A small crystal blue stream runs right through the centre of the village. Old but beautiful houses line the main street that leads to the heart of the village, so the centre of the village where a magical fountain sits. Okay. So today, you are going to use all those descriptive sentences that you have done for your elves, your character and your setting to help you write your story. Now, I'm going to read my what I have done for my story. Now, it's not finished, but I just wanted to give you an example. And you might notice that I have put in my sentences into my story. So I haven't had to think of new sentences. I've had to change them slightly, but I just put them into my story. So I've already got all the ideas in place. Okay, so here's my story. Now remember, we're following the story mountain. So you have your beginning. Okay, how does it start? Introduce your character and why they need help. Then we go to the middle, okay? So introduce the elves and say how they're going to help, and then the end. How does your story end? Do they help them? Does it end up happy or sad? Okay, what happens to the person when the elves go? Okay, so here's my story. So here's just my introduction, the first part of the story where I introduce my character and the problem. Once upon a time, there lived a humble gardener. He lived in a quiet village next to giant snow top mountains where a small crystal blue stream ran right through the centre of the village. Old but beautiful houses lined the main street that led to the heart of the village where a magical fountain sat. Do you notice there? That is my description sentence that's here, isn't it? Okay. Steve was a happy gardener. He would wear ripped, dirty, blue, old dungarees. He loved gardening and would tend to every... So here, look, I've pulled this from my description of my character. 
He loved gardening and would tend to everyone's gardens in the village using the water from the magic fountain. And using the water from the magic fountain to water the flowers. But lately, all the plants he has planted have died. He didn't know what was wrong. Unfortunately, everyone in the town started to notice and decided to no longer ask him to do their gardening. So again, that's basically my description of my character. Okay, and the setting. Without really adding much more into it. Okay, so it's a really good way to help build up your story already. Okay, so the middle of my sentence. So now I'm at this part of the story. Okay. One morning, Steve was sitting in one of the green fields just outside of the village. Suddenly, an elf appeared. He had bright red hair and was wearing stripy blue clothes. The elf climbed up onto the nearest rock and immediately fell off with a big bang. The elf looked at Steve and said, My name is Elfo and I am here to help. Now I haven't finished off my story. I haven't finished off the middle part and I haven't done the ending. But again, I have used the description I've already uh, wrote about my elf and added it into the story. So I haven't really had to think of anything new. I've already done it. Just writing it out. And in here, you'll read, I've added in lots of adjectives, lots of describing words to, dis to help you imagine the story. Okay? The more adjectives you add in to describe your characters or what they're doing or where they are, really helps make your story more interesting and it helps whoever's reading it picture it in their head okay so it's up to you now follow these slides follow a plan okay follow an introduction middle and an end don't write it rush it all into the first few sentences okay Beginning, middle, end. And remember, capital letters, full stops, and neat handwriting. Okay? And now I'm sure your stories are going to be brilliant, and I would really like to hear them once you've wrote them. Okay? Might even like to draw some pictures to go with it. Okay? So, bye-bye for now.